I recently picked up a bunch of stuff that we're taking a closer look at today and uh, all because of this a Macintosh color display that I have been on the lookout for for some time. So let's get right to it. See what we got here. This first box. We have an Apple II keyboard. There's a key missing, but the uh, seller told me that the uh, key they're missing is somewhere in the box. And, uh, yeah, I have a bunch of these, but uh, they are great. And uh, what else? Ah, here is a uh, 50 pin. Centronics uh, SCSI cable might come in handy. A mouse, hmm. No click here whatsoever. Something's wrong. Need to check that properly. And uh, it's a power cable. This doesn't look like it's uh, Apple brand, but uh, it's alright. What else do we have here? Ah. ADB cable. Great. Can't have too many of these. The keyboard. Excellent. And then the main attraction here at the bottom. Let's have a look. This is a Power PC. Power Macintosh. 7600. Uh, with a floppy drive, CD drive. And um, yeah, it looks like it's got a CD, CD pocket here stuck to the side, weirdly. Whoa. Yeah, these plastics are brittle, of course. What do we have? Ports, okay, SCSI. Ah, two internet ports. DB and the uh, the video and the audio in excellent. Doesn't seem to be any any expansion cards here though. But uh, cool. Right, put this to the side. Box. Under. Looking quite filthy, but uh, this one does click. This is the newer kind. This is a uh, serial cable. It's always useful as well. Another ADB keyboard. This one does have all its keys. It's looking quite nice. And uh, uh, there's a Centronics 50 connected to this computer at the bottom here as well as the power cable. So let's uh, lift it up and see what this is. This is a Power Macintosh 7166AV. This one also has a CD and a floppy drive. It does look a bit different. We'll look, we'll look at them head to head later. Oh, look at this one. Wow, yeah, this one has a lot of stuff. Right, so let's uh, throw some cables. Here's another Centronics 50 to 50 Cool. Oh, SCART cable, not very Macintoshy, but could be useful. What is this? Ah, this is a this looks like a parallel cable for the printer actually, the early printer, the uh, original image writer. Any 
here we have our own modern looking network cable. What type is it? Hmm, Cat5, so not really modern enough. But anyway, this, ah, another Centronics 50 to DB25. This I did need, as I mentioned, I have two of them. Here we have a Thalonet Ethernet receiver. I have a bunch of these, but uh, this will be useful in that last computer we saw to connect uh, an RG45. Here we have a normal Macintosh looking power cable. It's a Sweden, of course, this is why they look like this. Ah, one of these pass through cables for the uh, monitor. Excellent. Hmm. Centronics 50 to Centronics 50. Another power cable. This does not look like Macintosh original, Apple original, but uh, still there we go. Oop, Centronics 50 to Centronics 50. Wow, I have a lot of these now. That's cool. Yeah, this is a Macintosh power cable. Good. I think there are enough. Macintosh cable for all the computers, but otherwise here is another power cable, probably not Apple. Um, another Ethernet transceiver, the AUX, AUI, sorry, on the one end and the RG45 on the other. Ah, here's the uh, microphone. I have one in the other style that is round, but uh, this is that other style. This is slightly newer actually. Ooh. Here is a, uh, hmm, what is this? This isn't a DB25 pin, I don't think, right? Is it? Hmm, they look different, but yeah, maybe it is. Cool, another Centronics 50 to DB25 then, possibly. What is this? Ah, oh, this looks like some RF antenna. Antenna cable. I mean, this is a uh, Terminator block, SCSI. Here we have another mouse. Ooh, this is very yellowed, filthy, but uh, does click. What else do we have here? Another power cable. This is not Apple either. And uh, these are connected there at the bottom, but on top of this, we have a small computer, a Macintosh Performer 400. This is tiny, this is the first uh, pizza box shape Macintosh that I've ever owned. It's pretty cool. It's tiny, but uh, yeah, nice. And uh, of course this was the LC2, if I'm not mistaken. The Performer 400, it's the same, same computer. And at the bottom of this box, we have another Larger piece. Let's have a look at it. Ooh, we're going to disconnect this cable. I don't like these cables connected. Why does my cable connect? This cable. Ooh, it's another DB25 to the Doris 50. Excellent. Good thing I didn't buy one. And uh, yeah, back with this one. Well, the front maybe more interesting. First, we have. Here a Power Macintosh 7275, and uh, there's no CD player on this one, just the floppy drive. And uh, underneath, ah, you see that it belonged to ABB, big Swedish industrial company, well, Swedish Swiss, I think. And uh, this is the back of it. Let's look at them more carefully in a minute. Another terminator block, I think. Some kind of pass through. I think it's a terminator block. An ADB cable. And an ADB mouse. Well, it's cleaner and does click as well, although it's a bit dirty as well. Right. 
and uh, no, no key cup. Anyway, maybe I'll have a spare. All right, so this is quite a quite a little hole. Then wait, three correct chunky power Macintoshes and this little pizza box. We'll see. Since the Macintosh color display was the reason I bought all these things in the first place, I'm itching to see if it will work at all. So I've hooked it up here to my Quadra 700, which was a common combination back in the day. If it works, my aim is to use this monitor with this very Quadra, as well as with my Macintosh 2SI, seen in previous videos. Well, the power light turns on and there is the image with the mouse pointer in the corner. Awesome! and uh, see if the OS will load. Well, the image, the screen is working anyway, and there is the OS loading. Excellent. I couldn't help myself but to set up the monitor with the Quadra the right way around on the table with more space. With the extended uh, keyboard 2 and the ADB mouse, this looks great. I'm hoping to make a video on this setup sometime soon. Right, now that we have the uh, these big computers uh, on top of each other, we can see that uh, these two, the uh, 7600 and the 7200 here, the similar form factor. Uh, this one has a CD-ROM uh, player and that one doesn't. This one's actually less yellowed, but uh, they have the same uh, case and uh, same width, whereas this one, the uh, 7166AV, is, uh, is more narrow and uh, doesn't have this um, slot cover. I've seen uh, zip drives in this bay on other machines. And uh, yeah, let's open them up. So here is the uh, Power of Macintoshes then in my uh, little computer room and uh, yeah let's open it up and see what the state is of the uh, battery that's of course the critical question at this point with these computers so uh, yeah as I said I've never had one of these so I haven't opened one but uh, I have a uh, Quadra 700 and a Macintosh 2SI and they have tabs like this, so... Ah, oh, look at that. There's a battery inside. But it doesn't look like it's leaking. Let's get it out of there. Straight away. If I can pry this battery holder up without actually breaking it. I always thought these pizza box style computers look a bit silly, but uh, I never held one, and uh, now when I do, it's pretty slick actually. So, uh, my apologies for thinking they were silly. <laughs> Here we are, let's take it out, look at the date, and the state of it. This is a soft battery, no corrosion on the uh, Let's have a look. Made in France, 1993, right? So, uh, yeah, great. No leakage from that. The computer looks in quite a good state, actually. There is a ROM, I guess, here, and uh, no populated RAM slots. But uh, let's take a closer look at the the board. There is some yellowing, there is some sort of goo, I don't know if it's corrosion, but there's some sort of goo, yeah, it must be capacitor leakage in this area. It's a little like capacitors and there is goo there on the pin, so uh, yeah, these capacitors will have to go pretty quickly. Right, excellent, this board isn't ruined then. 
just some capacitor leaking and uh, we'll put the, uh, the lid on again and we'll come back to this once we've checked the other computers. So I had to go online and try to figure out how to open this style case and I found that they are praised for being so easy to open, the irony. But uh, now that I know how to do it, they are actually quite easy to get into. There are two plastic tabs to press under the lip and uh, the front and the top just slides right off. This 7200 is quite unevenly yellowed. This kind of looks like the logic board is missing, but there's a tray here with the drives sitting on top. This here on the side looks like a hood. You can see the uh, you can see the processor and the empty slots in there. It looks rather clean, but uh, I have to try to locate the battery, which must be under the other part there. Love the Apple logo there on the logic board. How do we continue getting into this famously easy case? Well, there are two latches here on the sides and uh, ah, it flips up just like this. That's awesome. This really is easily serviceable. So let's look at the battery. It does look okay, but uh, it is properly dusty in here. So we've got a white battery out of the Performa 400. And here we have a blue one. Should I collect these? Doesn't seem to be any leakage here either. Of course that is great news. Nope, no leakage here either. So that's another battery win. Right, let's put this back together and move on to the next one. Okay, so this is the same case, so it should be the same procedure really. Let's grab underneath and lift up. Ooh, look at that. That is nasty dust. Let's pop this open and have a look inside. This time I'm gonna make use of uh, this clever little support here on the side that uh, the uh, top of the case sort of will rest on once uh, you open it. I didn't think of that with the first case, but uh, wow, look at that, that is dirty down there. This is the worst one yet, I think. I'm hoping the battery is fine too and we can continue the good streak. What color is it, I wonder? Yikes, that is dusty. The layout of this board is quite different from the 7200 one that we just saw. Here the battery is on the left hand side there. Here we can support it on the top of the other computer like this. Yeah, there we have it. Doesn't seem to be leakage, but uh, let's take it out and have a look. There are a whole lot of uh, slots here for DRAM. This thing could be expanded from 32 megabytes up to one gigabytes of RAM, actually. Yeah, very different layout. PowerPC 604 processor actually on the daughter board there and not on the main logic board, which is very different from the 7200 computer that we just saw. All right, let's get the battery out of this thing. Cool, no leakage, and uh, blue with a red rim. Neat, slightly different from the other one then. You can compare them here, look, they're both blue, but one has a red rim and one has a blue rim. That's fun. Well, this one is gonna require some vacuuming at the very least. It will be interesting to see if it actually turns on. So here we have them, matching cases, but with the beefy one in a more yellowed state there on top. This case looks quite different as we saw before. This was the first Power Macintosh to use this case, but the case was also used in the Quadra 650 from 1993. This case is only slightly modified version of the case used in the Macintosh 2VX 
from 1992. The 7100 has a CD player in an oddly yellowed CD-ROM bay bezel. This computer actually has some interesting history and controversy that we'll look at in a future video. Well, after some serious prying, it seems to separate here, which is... Oh yes, look at this. Excellent. Ooh. This is one dusty computer. That is gross. Look at this. 15th of September, 1994, Oregana, Oregana, right? Hmm. So this had a CD in 1994. That wasn't, not all computers had, of course. Wow, well, let's take the, uh, let's take the camera down here and have a look. Ooh, so this is the uh, graphics card then, but uh, yeah, just look at this. This is dust bunnies, up on dust bunny, up on dust buddy. And the dust bunnies are only interrupted by the <laughs> electrolytic goo here that kind of makes it look wet uh, around the dust. Not good, let's zoom in here on the Electrolytic and this actually looks rusted. So I'm not touching that at the moment. I'm obviously very worried about the uh, the battery taking the state of things. Not quite sure where the battery is, but uh, yeah, we will locate it. So put the camera back on and. Uh, Look, I try to disassemble. So this, ah, uh, this is like squeezing '90s plastic. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> uh, it's kind of the last thing you want to do, is squeezing '90s plastic. But uh, yeah, that actually actually worked. So this held the power supply in place. Apple piece, very good. Will the apples apply? Just sorry, the apples apply. Will the powers apply? Just come out now. Then I wonder. Let's take a peek over here. Right, let's disconnect some, some stuff. Aha! This is a SCSI adapter. I have, actually I have a hard drive with this uh, type of connector, but I haven't been able to try it. It's an IBM hard drive, but I haven't been able to try it because I don't have one of these connectors, but this is like a uh, adapter board. Huh. That is excellent. And I will be able to try my other hard drive as well. Right, there's obviously the processor under there, but uh, right, I'm going to disconnect this as well. And this, uh, still no sign of the uh, battery. Right, I'm going to have to put the uh, put the thing to. Disgusting, wow. This is gross. I do need my gloves, really. Hmm. All right. Let's have a look. Beneath, ooh. Wet looking. So obviously electrolytic juice there among the dust bunnies, but uh, No battery in sight. So this is connected in here. I think this is this from here. Quick 
could, but that doesn't help us a lot. How on earth does one get the uh, motherboard out there, the logic board? All right, let's just keep disconnecting things. Here, this is the bars of pie cable. Ah, oh, here's the whole it's a floppy cable, and here we have the uh, uh, logic board, CD player, and the uh, hard drive, and then the, uh, the uh, power connector in the motherboard, which I can't really get out. It seems like we actually need to... Yeah, start disassembling things a bit more for real here. All right, so let's take this card out to start with. This is the, uh, so it's obviously a graphics card. This is the normal Macintosh graphics connector and uh, video in and out. So this must have been a very nice card back in the day. There's a connector here on the actual, this looks like a uh, connector for a daughter board. And uh, yeah, let's have a closer look at this later. These looks like RAM modules. Um, I'll remove these, the uh, filthy power supply and the filthy cable, um, the floppy drive. Right, I'm gonna start unscrewing these in the hope of this coming off in a more or less unified way. I'm going to put a Phillips head on my screwdriver. Here we are, and uh, yeah, here's a screw. This looks like this could uh, help us out. Putting this to the side. There's another one. And here is a third one. Now, is there another one on this side? Let's have a look. No, doesn't seem to be. Does this just come out then? Oh, yes, it does. Right, ooh. Hmm. Gross, but uh, yeah, satisfying to clean, I guess. And here is the hard drive. So everything is like on little trays. Like, kind of modular, but not quite as modular as... Does this tray also just lift out then? Is it fused to this side somehow? Yeah, it is fused. It's pretty toolless, but here we have to fight for every... Every uh, inch of access, and here we have the speaker, a CD player in the front, Ooh, and here maybe we can see the battery from here. Ah, oh, there's the battery. Yeah, you know what? Well, judging from this, it doesn't look like it's been leaking. Actually doesn't. Hmm, that is good news. Well, let's try to get it out somehow. Here's the reset uh, button assembly. You put it down a bit, you can see that it's the uh, same kind of thing that we had on the uh, Quadra 700 as well. But I have yet to make a video of that, I guess. One eternity later. Aha, uh -huh, there's a screw here. That we probably should remove. Maybe things will... Life will be easier. Mm -hmm. Promising. Alright, so this folds up. Does it disengage from the back there as well? I'm not sure how it's supposed to do that, but... Aha, uh -huh, like that, okay, it's kind of... 
Go to let go. It's an additional force it did. I guess this is some kind of the tray where everything sits. We had the disk drive here, hard drive here. We have the CD drive underneath. We had the power supply sitting here. And of course, this is filthy. But now we have the board exposed, which is exactly what we wanted and needed. Hmm, lovely. Right. Now this is dirty computing. I mean, it does get dirtier, I'm sure, but uh, remove this. But this is pretty bad. This is pretty bad, actually. I think, judging from the electrolytic here, I'm not sure I'm even going to try to power this on before changing the electrolytics. I will on the Performa 400, but uh, I don't think I will on this. May 1994, 29 years then, exactly. But uh, yeah, no leakage. What kind of battery is this? Lithium. Um, yeah, lithium is definitely more stable than my card, and this is also this is also lithium battery. We have a bunch of RAM populated here, which is promising. And uh, the board is actually brown. The board, I see a screw here in the middle. Needs to come out. I think that was the only thing holding it now. Yeah. Right. Let's see if we're able to lift it out. Yes, here we go. Look at that. Coming out. Let's look at the back. That dropping too much of the goo. Ooh, it's quite beautiful actually. It's like brown and it has these little uh, green bias. Uh, but uh, it's not corrosion, it's just the color of it. it seems. Huh. Cool, I've never seen this color before like this. Ninety-three, ninety-four. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to vacuum clean this definitely right now. Here I have the Performa 400 with the leaky caps hooked up to the now known good Macintosh color display. See so yeah, how the base of the monitor is a perfect fit for the curve of the Performa 400 case. The yellowing of the monitor is also quite apparent, unfortunately. But this does not give any image, sadly. It sounds like it's running normally, but uh, without a chime and there is no image. Well, I'm going to have to try to do some troubleshooting and uh, repairs then on this in a future video, I guess. So it's the next day and uh, let's see if we have any more luck with this one, the Power Macintosh 7600 with the same monitor. As I said, the 7600 and the 7200 share the same case. So this case was used from the 7200 at 75 megahertz, released in 95 until the beige G3 at 333 megahertz, which was sold until 1999 quite a span of technological improvement in the same case. Yes, look at that. It boots right up from the internal hard drive. I'm kind of used to the SCSI hard drive in the Compact Max not working, but this one certainly does. Wow, the desktop is as cluttered as the logic board was dusty. Let's see, 176 megabytes of RAM installed, not close to the official 512 official maximum or the one gigabyte unofficial maximum, but quite an upgrade from the standard 32 megabytes of RAM. The 7200 had no signs of life when I tried to turn it on, so I decided to put the known working PSU from the 7600 inside to see if the logic board and hard drive were okay. Here is the failed PCU on the bench. I'm no good at power supplies, but uh, I'll be taking a closer look at this as well. Maybe it's just a blown fuse.
This is a promising chime and uh, hard drive sound. Let's see if it actually boots from the hard drive also. Yes, it does. Excellent. That's great. I wonder what this computer was used for. It doesn't have a CD drive uh, and it had that asset tag from the ABB industrial company. I'm sorry about the flicker from the CRT. Not much to, to do about that, I'm afraid. Um, in reality, it looks fine. Okay, so this machine seems to be running system 7.5. The other one had system 9. It's really unusual to come across system 8 installed. People seem to have largely hung on to system 7 until suitable hardware for system 9 came along. This is definitely a cleaner desktop. So this is indeed running uh, system 7.5 and we can see that it has 16 megabytes of RAM installed. Quite a contrast to the other Power Macintosh in the same case. I'll be making a separate video trying to get the Power Macintosh 7166AV going, but here are some shots of it. The motherboard was in a terrible state due to capacitor leakage as we saw. Just look at that goo and the black marks on the PCB around the capacitors. Here I have removed the capacitors, but uh, there seems to be damage to the PCB under the pads. There we can see the early PowerPC 601 processor soldered to the motherboard. Just look at those patches. This will have to be treated somehow to make sure the corrosion process is arrested and that uh, nothing spreads any further. Well, we've got two of the four computers in this hall up and running, and I'm hopeful to be able to get the Performa 400 and the Power Macintosh 7100 going in future videos. Most importantly, the Macintosh color display works great, and uh, there were a bunch of useful cable in there as well, some of which no doubt can help finance some of this. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate if you hit that like button. And if you like more retro computing coming your way, do consider subscribing to the channel. I'm sure we'll be returning to some of these machines very soon. Take care and thank you for watching.